of um, the second phase past uh, the towards the uh, second phase of Publix as we continue to have development within this community. That is all positive news for Clay County. With that said, um, we know that uh, two years ago, some of you were, may have been in the process of impacting, uh, impacted by a potential uh, rezoning or redistricting from uh, Clay County District Schools. You may have been a part of that or not. I will tell you openly that um, uh, from, from that side that uh, we learned a lot from, from, that, from, from the prior leadership about uh, what worked, what didn't, what we could do differently as, we're, as it relates to rezoning and redistricting. So tonight is uh, it's about you. It's about us talking about our plans. It's talking about how we arrived at um, identifying the rezoning, uh, the rezoning for uh, uh, Discovery Oaks Elementary School, and how your child may be impacted for that rezoning efforts. Before I start, I want to acknowledge we have some school board members here this evening. We have Miss um, Gilhausen is here this evening, Ashley Gilhausen. And we also have uh, Mrs. Janice Karakis as well in the back. So we want to thank you all for being a good round of applause for what they do every single day. Um, other board members may be tripping in and out. Some of them have uh, uh, double staffs of other events that they're attending in the district. But I can't tell you, this work could not happen without their support every single day um, in, in their efforts. So, uh, we'll, we'll talk about, um, uh, if, if you want to follow along with our PowerPoint, uh, I know that it may be very, uh, you know, maybe a trouble in the, trouble in the seat. Because the lights, the lights either stay on or they, or they turn off, and we have um, uh, some type of uh, 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 small lighting in here that we can put on. I'd rather just keep them on unless uh, you want me to take them off. If not, you can go to uh, oneclay.net, and you can go right now to our home uh, web page, and you can uh, access the, your mobile device's presentation that you can interact with, with me this evening, or you have the accessibility to obtain that information when you get home. Uh, in addition, this will be Facebook Live, uh, so what this is live right now. If you have family members, friends, or neighbors that could not attend, you can text them right now, let them know that they can go on and watch it. We know that they have busy schedules as well in order to see uh, the discuss about what we're going to do for the rezoning project for Discovery Oaks Elementary School. Um, tonight, uh, overall objectives for us uh, together, for our time together, we have a number of objectives that we want to address. The first one being to talk about how uh, the rezoning options for Discovery Oaks Elementary. We know that once you build a school, there has to have a, um, a rezoning process in, uh, within the works. We will talk about recommendations uh, that I will present to the board. We will have two recommendations that I will provide information to each of you tonight. And how I arrived at these, um, uh, the rationale and the, uh, the variables that I arrived in order to take my final recommendation to the board so that you understand the analytics behind it. In addition, we'll talk about construction phases, where we are from the construction phase, and we'll talk about important dates as it relates to timeline. And then we'll talk about instructional focus for what Discovery Oaks will bring um, for the 18-19 uh, school year. And then we'll have some time for feedback at the end, where we'll do a Q&A. Uh, we'll have a Q&A for each of you along. We'll, uh, we'll also take some questions from Facebook Live in order to address each of your questions. Now, uh, we may not get to everyone's questions, but uh, at the end of the night, we will have uh, a post-it paper uh, around on the, when you exit that it gives you opportunity to provide feedback on option one and option two, whether or not it's going to be feedback that you celebrate or it's going to be feedback and recommendations in order to refine our two recommendations that we will present to the board at the end of the night. Um, before I go on, are, are we having problems seeing this in the back? Do you want me to show the other phase of the lights kind of off? No, you keep going, be quiet, just tell me about my school. That's got to deal. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, we'll go with that one. All right, so ultimately, um, before we, we get into this, the, the uh, Discovery Oaks Elementary, uh, I was able to take over the school district one year ago. And in this time, uh, we brought, brought a, theory of, um, a theory of change to the school district in order to improve teaching and learning in, in Clay County. Um, as you know, Clay County, uh, we all moved here, and I moved here personally 15 years ago because it was a better education for my child. And it's my hopes and dreams to continue to implement that same mentality. And by doing that, we created a theory of change, bless you, which ultimately will turn key into a, uh, to a theory of action for Clay, district, uh, for Clay County District Schools. We know there's four phases for us to be successful. The, big, the first phase is that we have to create the greatest environment for our student learners in order to have a safe environment, because safety is our greatest priority, so that our kids can come to school disruption-free and be ready to grow emotionally, socially, and intellectually every single day. 
That is priority one as me as superintendent. We know that if we build that foundation where we have a great environment, then we can focus on the second uh, component, which is building the capacity of our educators and at the same time building the capacity of our leaders. We know that uh, this stride is for us to really activate um, a teacher's knowledge in order so they can better interact with their standards, so they can truly understand how to better serve every child in their classroom in order to improve teaching and learning every single day. On top of this, we have spent a number of time, a number of strategies in order to build the capacity of our leaders so they can work side by side our educators to problem solve and decision make so we can differentiate instruction every single day for every learner within this organization. And that will ultimately lead to a part where we're able to recruit and attract our uh, recruit new newcomers to our school district, attract first round draft picks, and retain first round, first round draft picks as it relates to our teachers and to our leaders within this organization. And if we have these things, a great environment, and we work on building the capacity, the next thing we'll work on is making sure that every, ha every classroom has rigorous activities to, compare, to prepare your child to compete not only locally, but at the end of the day nationally. And we know that we want our students to, to, to meet grade level expectations, but we want our kids to be able to have enrichment accelerated to operate, uh, opportunities as well so that they can grow intellectually. And ultimately, if we do all these things, the, the, the final prong is, is to prepare our students to become full option graduates, to make certain that they're, they're ready to either go to the workforce, or they're, they're ready to go to a college, or they're ready to, uh, to, uh, to go to the military. We want our kids to, have any, to take any one of those pathways in a confident manner in order to prepare them for the next stage of life so they can be productive citizens, not only locally, but also through the state or where they believe their hearts will transition. So now, for what you've come to is, um, is, is the talk about DOE, and um, I'm sorry we do acronyms, uh, this is for Discovery Oaks Elementary, I know we wanted to find a different acronym, but it's just the way it worked out, um, the home of the Voyagers. So relevant information that directed us for, for these actions um, in, in reference to looking at our rezoning, we know there were some parameters that we had to, that were in place that we had to focus on. The first one being, sort of, we knew that when we were going to build a school, it had to impact rezoning. Okay, rezoning and redistricting. Call it what you want, it's all the same. We know that this topic is never favorable in the most parts. It's always contentious, it, it's uh, somewhat disruptive, and it is never, it, it creates angst within neighborhoods, it creates angst within communities. So we knew that that was, but we knew that we had to do it because in fall 2018, we will open up a new school. Additionally, parameters, we have grade level structures where we wanted to uh, look at Poe and we wanted to look at Oak Leaf Village, which are now pre-K through five schools. We wanted to look at their structure and transition them to, to a pre-K six school, which mirrors the, the, all of the elementary schools within this organization for consistency. And the final part we knew is that once we make this transition, we wanted to take Oak Leaf Junior High School and, and move it from a middle school to a junior high school so we can keep our fifth graders into uh, in our elementary schools where they have greater confidence, greater focus, and, and, uh, and have greater success as they transition to the elementary school. So all this to say is our, we had a number of uh, five goals that we wanted to focus on as, um, as we uh, look to create the, the options for presenting to the board for rezoning. At the end of the day, we wanted to look at making sure that Discovery Oaks has sustainable enrollment and that we didn't want to build a school that had to automatically build portables and add portables to the school. For those of y'all who are in this community, it's like Portable City. No matter where you go, whatever school you go to, it's portables everywhere. We wanted to make certain that uh, when we created the rezoning model, we were able to have sustained classrooms to meet the needs of our growing community in order for us, every kid, to have a seat in a, in a brick and mortar classroom versus a portable on the outside. Um, we know that, um, I will tell you that we have a project right now going through the leadership of Dr. Kemp, my assistant superintendent of operations, where we will work to uh, eliminate portables every single year within this organization to make sure that everyone has a brick and mortar seat within, within our school district. Also, we wanted to, to have greater alignment, as I said earlier, from a pre-K to six uh, perspective. We know that data shows nationally kids, fifth graders who stay in, the, in their elementary model, they do better academically, they do better, better from a behavior standpoint, they also do better um, from an emotional standpoint. So we want to keep them, uh, keep their confidence, uh, you know, uh, momentum going. 
versus allowing them to transition and make that step to a junior high school where sixth grade becomes a very difficult year for someone uh, to be in a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade continuum. So we want to make sure that uh, we eliminate that process. We see historically that data shows that students that transition from fifth grade to middle, uh, middle, middle school in the sixth grade, that we do have lower performances and now that is coupled with we have higher expectations and higher standards. But we do see some, uh, some mental changes in our kids and our learners and we want to stay consistent with our junior high uh, mentality. Uh, on top of it, uh, running too fast, let's push that button back. On top of it, we want to make sure we had minimal disruptions to, um, to, to DOE when we selected our options for option ones and option two. And the last one, we wanted to make sure that we, we, we focused on safety being a greatest priority, about proximity for our students who are going to walk, and those students who elect to ride their bikes as well. That was all taken, and these goals uh, were the goals we wanted to arrive as I present these options to you this evening. So variables that um, are, are in place for us that are playing factors for us uh, within, with, within making our decisions, we have, all right, see, come up here with us. You come up here with us. Come on, come on. We got water. We get, listen here, I got two good. I got two good. Uh, we have, uh, I'm sorry, the lighting. I, and I try to pick a cool color. It doesn't look good on the air. It should look darker better. We have, uh, we looked at safety conditions. We also looked at um, current enrollments. We looked at neighborhood uh, proximity. We looked at geographical balance. We also looked at transportational needs, and we looked at growth of uh, growth in particular areas within Oakland. These were the parameters and variables that we looked at in order to make sound decisions to, to present to the board and, and provide to you for feedback as a, if informational through our community. Um, when it comes to looking at a side-by-side -side comparison, these are the three schools that we're trying to uh, impact in a positive manner. If you can see this slide, it provides a current enrollment, current capacity, uh, and, and current utilization within our schools. schools. You can see that Plantation Oaks is, has, it, it has a lot of kids. When you have 1,400 kids in an elementary school, that's a significant amount of kids in order to educate every single day. And I will tell you, Ms. Roach and uh, her staff are doing an excellent job uh, gaining access to our learners in order to better understand their needs and moving the needle in reference to student, student improvement and student achievement. But ultimately, to, 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 to our side, that's a lot of kids for them to leave in, the elementary, in, in an elementary setting. Um, as you look at the utilization, it's over 100%. If you look at OVE's, uh, OVE has around 900 kids and have some opportunity for growth in that area. Hence the reason when we move from a pre-K from, from pre to 5 to pre-K to 6, that utilization will go up and we'll be able to maximize every seat within that school. And then finally, we have the junior high school, 1,600 kids nearly. That's a lot of kids in a, in a junior high school. Um, this plan of rezoning will help alleviate that, uh, alleviate that uh, percentage of kids, the number of kids, in order for us to have central laser-like focus for the 7th and 8th grade learners. And we know that uh, junior high school is a special place for our kids anyways. They're trying to figure out who they are emotionally, socially, academically. We know that we, you know, that's a, a difficult time if you have a kid that's in that in that time frame or has a kid in that time frame. It's a it's a unique, fun time, and we're trying to do a better job with our problem solving around that. We do see growing areas in a number uh, within our community. We see that uh, Arbor Mill, um, Armstrong, DRA, Eagle Landing, and also uh, the north of the uh, the roundabout. We do see uh, opportunity for growth. In, in these areas is currently growth within their neighborhoods and also future growth as well. So we, when we took that in consideration and when planning and providing the options for, for our community for, for uh, one and two for, the, for DOE. So here it is, option one. As you can see in the right hand corner it says recommended. This is the option that I will be recommending to the school board. Um, as you know, and I will tell you up front, I'm sorry, I, would, I should have said this before, we do have school board members here this evening, and uh, we do have school board here this evening, I'll come to you, this evening, they cannot answer any questions, they cannot speak to this, because ultimately they will, will be to a part where they have to vote on these recommendations and, and on these options, okay? Um, also, we have uh, Chair Ms., uh, Mrs. Uh, Carol Slutter is here, let's welcome her. Let me Thank apologize for being late. It's okay. You're probably watching Alabama. I was on, no, I was on Argyle Forest Boulevard. Amazing. Turn these lights on. So for, for these next couple slides, I will turn this off so you can see the color. Um, I saw some hands. I believe that's what we wanted to see. 
So these two slides, and the, the first slide is the first recommendation. This is what I will be recommending to the school board. Now, it's going to get dark in here when I turn this off. You're going to have some spotlighting, but bear with me because this is what you, you came to see anyway. Okay. Here, I, I think there's a button over here. I should push it. See, well, I'll push button and see what comes on. If the fire alarm comes, just stay in place. <laughs> Here we go. We good? Is that better? <coughs> For those of y'all who are watching Facebook Live, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bear with us. We're in the dark, but you hopefully you can hear my audio. Um, uh, when we're looking at uh, the, the zoning, we wanted to make sure we identify pros and cons. And once again, if you're late, you can go on our website, oneplay.net, and go to our banner. You can pull this PowerPoint up. It's already on the, it's on, online. You can interact with it and watch it while, while I'm going through it as well. Because um, it's color coded. And this this uh, map presents every one of our schools. You see you see that we have um, we have PO up here. We have OVE. We have um, uh, DOE, and we have Oakley <coughs> Junior High School. This is a recommendation number one for attendance zone. Here are the pros and the cons. We wanted to make certain that we were very honest about the pros and the cons for each of the options, and show the division of um, of the recommendation geographically. <coughs> Here the pros are is that we reduce and we reduce pose enrollment. We are moving from 1,400 kids around to around uh, from 1,400 to 800 kids. We look at students uh, still have availability for have transportation within within this model for option one. We also keep neighborhood students together in the sense that we do not split neighborhoods. So when your child interacts with someone in the neighborhood or is their playmate or on the same team, they get a chance to go to the same school, which truly works to build a culture, and that's what we're trying to do in the Oak Leaf area and also through Clay County District Schools. Also, this area allows us to look at boundary proximity for schools, and I give you an example. This right here, this will be the entire wave of students who are projected to go to DOE, okay? This wave here will be on the, the entire student body. Well, let's go back. There we go. Got to be able to use this. <laughs> All right, you know, I'm trying to push all kinds of buttons. This would be the geographical um, area that will go to Poe uh, through here, and this would be the area that will go to DOE. What we wanted to do geographically and boundary-wise, we wanted to have kids who were across the street from the school to be able to gain access to the school. We think it's most important for our kids to be a part of a community. It didn't make sense for our kids who are across the street from the school to bust them all the way to Poe when they can go four or five hundred yards to their school. The question may, um, the only concern that we have here for our, for our cons is that our, our bus ride, our, our walkers and our, and our bikers, it's a hard time trying to cross that freeway. And that's, I call it a freeway because I drive it every single day. And I'm sorry, probably some of you are guilty as me. We think we're NASCAR, and we drive, and we go to the Oak, Leaf, uh, the Oak Leaf Parkway plantation, and we just get after it. One thing we will do, while that's a con, we are presenting to put a, uh, a stoplight there. That will break the momentum, and also a crossing guard. That will allow access for our students who would like to walk, and parents would like to walk them, and at the same time allows access for our bike riders as well to be able to cross that road. And honestly, and openly, as a community member for 15 years, we need to break that, uh, that speedway anyways in order for us to, um, to have a, a, a safer environment. As you see here, uh, option one does two things for us, and it, it creates enrollment. It gives us, uh, DOE allows us for, to have a projected of 802 students, including, and then uh, Poe allows us to have 826 students. We really have a balanced, uh, a balanced approach as it relates to enrollment. The other thing this allows us to do, and I'll talk about it here in a little bit, it allows us to have a, uh, only an equal amount of students who are in the, in the areas that we believe there will be futuristic growing or will be more housing to go up in order to pour into uh, Discovery Oaks. What we do not want is, um, and I'm going to go to the next option, this model here, and, and trust me, the only reason you're seeing two models is because my team has worked rigorously for models three, four, five, six, and seven. They were unsafe, uncostly, geographically not sound. So what we brought to you today is, is uh, simplistic models that make sense for this community. In model two, what model two does for, for pros, it once again, it allows us to, um, to uh, decrease the enrollment for uh, plantation oaks. It allows us to have continued busing for kids to continue to qualify for busing. It keeps neighborhoods together. In the end of the day, it allows them walk, uh, and walkers in this, in this uh, model 
and bikes and students who want to bike, they don't have the option of crossing this road in a safe manner. So they will all go this whole um, uh, parkway, Plantation Oaks Parkway, uh, Oak Leaf um, Parkway, uh, will be the divider for kids who go to Poe, and this will be the area that goes to uh, Discovery Oaks. The issue with this model is that we won't have, we will not have sustained ability to house all of the kids. We are building this school to have to house around 900 seats for our learners. Okay, we can accommodate that in with uh, option one. Option two, we see continued growth in the north of the roundabout area. We still have houses that are for sale, 70 or 80 houses for sale in uh, Forest Hammock. We also see uh, significant growth in the area of the Eagle Landing, especially, I mean, if you haven't been back here, it's like driving forever. And there's so many houses and stuff going on. And then I believe we have growth, uh, potential growth in this area as well. What this model doesn't allow us to do is have an equalization of monitoring growth within the organization. So it would be unsound for me to make a recommendation to the board to show that we are building a school that cannot house uh, the number of students that, um, that, are, that are going to be impacted and be able to attend through the model of growth. Um, but again, I will say that this is another model that is presented. This will be flipped. DOE will have a model of 823 students and Poe would have an implementation of uh, enrollment of 805 students. Still pure, pretty good in reference to the number of students that we can uh, service on an equal basis. This, uh, this slide here is just a side-by-side, -side, another geographical outlook of um, uh, option one and option two, and, and it shows en enrollment as well. This slide here talks about our goals. It goes back to the goals. When, when you create a model and you have goals, you have to line up and see what option one and option two, how does that fare when you send the recommendations to the board. And the, uh, we know that the first four options, both uh, the, uh, are hitting uh, the first four indicators and goals with reducing enrollment, with looking at um, uh, having a balanced, sustainable number of kids, with looking at uh, having a grade structure that's going to change that mirrors the grade structures currently within our school district, and at the same time, it has minimal disruptions to the student body within this organization, within this community. The last two that uh, option one uh, does better than offers, uh, option two does it. It minimizes uh, transportation needs and it creates greater passageways for safety and walk avenues for our students and bus ride, uh, and, and um, bike riders as we will put a light right in front of the school across so students can gain access to the school within the community, no different than what we do at Oak Leaf uh, Village Elementary School down the road. Uh, on top of it, it allows us to balance growth in our neighborhoods. And that's us trying to be as strategic as we can and thoughtful as we can for looking at potential growth with, with, within this community. Um, this is a side-by-side -side slide that we showed you earlier, but now it's going to provide uh, analytics of uh, projected enrollment that if we move forward with option one, it shows us that uh, sustained enrollment uh, with greater management when we look at uh, Discovery Oaks and you look at Oakley Village and you're looking at the junior high school. Much more uh, greater management opportunities and greater access to, um, to, uh, to address kids and their needs within, within these three models. All right, so we zoning option one. These are the neighborhoods in which you would be impacted. So um, option one shows that if you're going to attend, uh, the, all students who will be designated to attend Discovery Oaks Elementary, you would fall into, um, I think there's uh, nine, three, four, five, six, there's eight neighborhoods that would be impacted by Discovery Oaks Elementary School. And then um, there would be, uh, there'd be 11 impacted from uh, Plantation Oaks. Okay, this would be the first recommendation that uh, moving forward uh, for, for our community. Um, important dates and timelines as it relates to the opening and the construction of the work forward that we have with Discovery Oaks. Um, right now, my, uh, my uh, you know, December now, we're in this uh, meeting for an informational meeting to get some feedback from you as constituents in order for me to refine any necessity, any of my options to have a better understanding of what I can take to the board with your input. Um, I, my projection date to take this to the board will be January. <laughs> due to the fact that we have to work rigorously to A, name a principal in January, and B, start to move in, the, in, in February to, um, to complete a staff allocation plan. And I say a staff allocation plan, this plan, you can turn the lights back on uh, the The staff allocation plan is how I will set up and fund positions 
for Discovery Oaks, uh, for Discovery Oaks Elementary School. In addition, we will go to March. We will begin uh, the hiring process. I will work with, um, sorry, excuse me, Woo! enjoy that. Welcome back, Facebook Live. <laughs> Um, and in March, we will we will look to start to uh, potentially hire for this for this new school. We have a number of, uh, of we have leg work to do with uh, Ms. Piva and the CCEA in order to talk about transition time in order to um, to make certain that we have the affordability through the collective bargaining agreement to identify who has availability to come to the school. And then as we look in um, in July, we the structure will be complete, and then we will open school up in August of, of 2018. As you can see, this is a rigorous timeline. Um, we held interviews this week for potential leaders for this school. I am confident in uh, all the individuals that we interviewed, could, every one of them had the ability and skill set to lead this work. And we seek to announce this individual, hopefully, in the next two weeks before we go to holiday, uh, to our holiday break. Um, uh, as soon as we identify this leader for the school, we will uh, we will begin the planning process, uh, planning process for uh, Discovery Oaks. We'll talk about initiatives. We'll talk about curricula. We'll talk about hiring. We'll talk about approach and plan in order to create uh, to get off the ground to create an awesome experience for your children as they darken the doorway in in, in August. Uh, so uh, the instructional focus for Discovery Oaks will be somewhat, uh, it'll be great and innovative and fresh. We know that surrounding schools such as Poe and OPE do a great work as relates to uh, pushing the STEM initiatives and leadership initiatives within our school. Discovery Oaks will be a, uh, well, we will continue the STEM work but we will add uh, arts design and it will be a STEAM school. And this is where we take science, technology, math, engineering, and art and we embed it and integrate it in order to create problem solvers, in order for us to have critical thinkers, for them to be prepared to do project-based, inquiry-based learning, which is a new innovative learning for, for our kids. Uh, we will continue to have uh, expose kids to real life experiences. And I give you an example. Uh, we talked about uh, you know Black Creek. We can do a, uh, instead of just going to your core classrooms in isolation, we may have an opportunity to do a project-based learning uh, scenario where they may look at the quality, uh, the quality of the water in, in Black Creek, and they'll look at a number of science analytics. They'll pull about the quality of water. They'll look at the um, uh, so, uh, they'll look at the mathematical principles. They'll look at the history using uh, social science to have the historical perspective of Black Creek, and they'll pull it all together through ELA in order to to problem solve, identify solutions, to critically think, and have a presentation through reading and writing, speaking, and defending their answers from a collective standpoint. So that's what STEAM is. It's a culture we want to create. It's uh, not a program. It's not an initiative. It's a culture that we create within our school. And we want to, as we seek to hire, we want to have teachers who have the willingness and aspirations to understand STEAM so we can activate that knowledge and that learning process within the school. On top of that, we will have uh, computer coding will be active uh, throughout the uh, school, the same way we're doing in, uh, in Poe and OBE. And then we'll continue to have um, art, PE, music, and media integrated in every one of our classrooms. And that will be integrated in the project-based, inquiry-based learning process as well. And then finally, we'll continue to the one-to-one uh, -one play initiative, where we are moving rigorously to make certain that every kid in the core classroom has access to a, uh, a technology device to, in order to enhance their learning. Uh, if you haven't been informed in, in the last 30 days, the school district uh, was not wireless in, in a majority of our schools and after one year of being in leadership and under the direction of uh, Mr. McCauley, under the direction of Jeremy Bunkley and his team, uh, we have moved to have wireless uh, in every one of our schools now and we are moving closer to have that uh, accessibility to our one-to-one -one devices that we aspire to, to have for our kids so we can meet our digital natives where they are as they seek to grow intellectually. Um, uh, as we talk about kids and we talk about the learning process in every one of our schools, including the, uh, we want to make sure there's four items that we truly focus on. This is our four principles that guide our work every single day in Clay District School and Clay County District Schools. We want to make sure that we have students who are fully, actively engaged in the lesson. And that doesn't mean kids who are compliantly engaged, but they are actively, effectively engaged in the learning process. Additionally, we want to make sure that kids are exposed to rigorous activities every single day that allows them to meet grade level expectations, grade level standards, and also has an opportunity for accelerated components. We want to make students, sure that students are owning their individualized learning. 
So uh, I want you to push and own and uh, push your students and hold them accountable when they come home to make sure they're setting short-term and long-term goals and they know where they are academically and where they need to go um, academically every single day. We want that culture to be taken to be in place in every one of our schools, especially in, uh, when we launch the new school, the same framework that we have in Poe and the same framework we have in Oakley Village and across this district. And finally, we want kids to have the ability to articulate and demonstrate understanding. And that's through reading, writing, speaking, um, and, and, and having through collaborative structures. So they really understand and turn key what they're actually learning every single day within with our classroom to maximize their time. So now this is uh, your time uh, for us to be as candid as we can be, can be uh, as open as we can be, to be caring and inclusive in this process, for us to have um, a dialogue about any questions you may have that pertains to uh, Discovery Oaks and our decisions from option one and option two. Tonight I do have a number of staff that will assist us, uh, assist me in the, the Q&A. Um, we have Dr. Kemp, who's the Assistant Superintendent of Operations. He is the one that I uh, gave a timeline 11 months ago. I need to build school, I need to build, build fast, I need to build it within my budget. And uh, he hears it every day, and uh, when he sees me, he kind of like uh, keeps running away, but uh, he's running over here to make sure it's on task. And he's done a fabulous job with this work. We have Mr. Jim O'Connell, who's a consultant for our work, who's done great work, of uh, done a lot of builds to this uh, community and Clay District Schools, and he's done a great job managing this work for us, and, uh, and I'm glad to call him a partner in our work in, in, in Clay County District Schools. And we have uh, Mr. Fossa over here. He is our uh, planning organizer coordinator. This is the guy that walks every neighborhood that tells me who's living there, what the potential is, where the growth is, where I can build, where I cannot build, and uh, tells me a lot of other things, like be quiet half time. And, uh, but he, he keeps us straight. So and then we have Dr. Stallman, who is my assistant superintendent of curriculum instruction, who drives all of the work for curriculum instruction uh, from K to six in elementary and then does but the bulk of her work um, uh, trying to improve teaching and learning in the elementary perspective will lead the work uh, side by side uh, DOE. So at this time, um, I don't know if we have microphones, I don't know if we did cards, we have microphones? We have, okay, we have. So if, if, if you have questions, raise your hand. Uh, Mr. Connor, who is my assistant superintendent, uh, no, he's the chief of schools, uh, chief of secondary education, he'll walk around, he'll give you a card. If you'll fill that card out, um, he'll come back and collect it. We'll try to answer as many questions. We'll come to you as we can. Um, he will also be in my, uh, my banner tonight. Sorry. And in order to, uh, yeah, we got, we got, uh, you can come up here. Doc, you want to come up here as well? And we'll bless you. We'll be able to answer any of your questions. Again, before you leave tonight, we will have post-it notes for you to, to interact with post-it notes to be on the end, that you can provide your feedback that we will take back and start to problem solve on option one, you okay, man? Option one and option two, the same as order. So I say, once you uh, uh, complete your question, just raise your hand, I'll have staff come in and pick your, uh, uh, pick your uh, question up, and we'll answer it for those who um, are here this evening or for those who are watching this evening on Facebook Live. We will take some questions from Facebook Live as well, so we can have the true interaction with our community for those who are who are not with us this evening. So while we wait, um, I can go ahead. I'll. I'll, I'll yeah, we have. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is Katie Moeller, uh, leader of professional development. Uh, so making sure I'm doing the right thing. So if you have a, uh, once your card is complete, if you'll just raise that your card up, I'll have staff come immediately right to you, and um, we'll, we'll start, and he'll, we'll, we'll read the question. All right, so the first question is, will there be a back entrance? Uh, back entrance. Thank you, thank you. Check. Check. Check, yeah. All right, Mr. Superintendent, Sorry. your first question is, will there be a back entrance at DOE to avoid kids walking on the main road? And does option one include any zoning from Tynes Elementary? Yeah, so uh, and to answer that question, it does not uh, impede Tynes at all. So it doesn't impact Tynes. Tynes structure will stay, will stay as is. Um, as it relates to uh, the back access for uh, the community, right now the plans do not uh, uh, provide that opportunity. And uh, we move that because we want to make sure that we, have, uh, we keep the campus as secure as we can. 
Um, but we will take that feedback. If you'll put that on a post-it note, we can go back and look and see if that's availability. We'll work with our architects and our team to determine whether or not that's even accessible through our plan. Question two. Is the cost of a spotlight as proposed in option one a potential no-go for this option? Oh no, well, we are not building a school option one without a stoplight. I'm, I'm openly telling you, we, it's, it's not happening. So we, it, 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 is, it is unsafe for us to build the school and have option one without a stoplight. It is a priority. It's a priority for me, knowing that uh, as a leader of organization, safety is my greatest priority. That stoplight has to be a part of option one in order for kids who are across the street and parents to gain access to the school. Is that a school zone also? Yes, sir. Put that light in. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Is there a plan to incorporate STEAM at Poe and OBE as well? We can. Um, you know, STEAM, like I said, STEAM is a culture. We, uh, they do a good job with STEM right now. We can, we can uh, make that a priority. We are going to be working with every one of our elementaries in the school district in order to create more robust thematic choice programs. Um, I will continually work with Ms. Kendrick, who's a principal of uh, Oak Leaf Village, and work side by side with Mrs. Roach, who's a principal of Plantation Oaks, to better define what their thematic approach wants and would like to be. And we want to really maximize what they currently have and their current, their current successes. So if, um, if they believe in their hearts that we can prove that uh, the STEAM approach is the best selection for that school, we will move forward. If we believe that something else like a leadership development uh, would, would be better in that school, then we will move in that direction. But we will engage or stake, uh, the principal, their leadership teams, and look at their successes in order to identify the best choice for them and that makes sense for this community. Or kids. Will parents have a choice to keep their students at Poe in the fourth and fifth grade? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, right now, the, the options do not allow that to happen. Uh, we have to open up, we have to be fiscally sound, and the way we do that is that we create option one and option two both are, these are the neighborhoods that will start the school. Um, what it does is it allows us to build a staff allocation plan it allows us to really project hard numbers, what, what, uh, what students were able to open. As you, you, you got to understand, we, we know that there's some of our kids that love their schools, but they're going to love this new school as well. So um, at, at this time, it will not, uh, we do not forecast and allow to, uh, for grandfathering to take place in order for us to be financial and fiscal responsible and to create an allocation plan and projectability for our school and also to have balanced number of students at each one of our schools. Remember, this community pushed two years ago for a build. This community pushed, okay? So I'm telling you, when I was running for superintendent, I told you I would find a way to help this community create because of the growth, not because I personally wanted a school, know that, but I saw the potential in the growth. The board has made a, a great effort to understand the growth in this area and to work to, to build this school debt-free. And that's attractive and, and proactive on the board. And the board's done a good job in, 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 in problem solving that area. But at this time, it's a clean slate, um, meaning the kids who are in the projected models will be allocated for uh, Discovery Oaks, and those who are at Poe will be allocated for, um, uh, for Poe. No, at the same time, that teachers in those schools have the right and the option through the contractual language to be able to apply to those schools. So if they're attached to teachers, you know, uh, it's waiting to be seen who's going to be uh, to, to be transferred over and who that principal will hire. But um, at the end of the day, we've got to have a cleaner process and a cleaner a clean process for making sure we have that um, uh, identified for enrollment and projectability. Anything else? For that? Just take a while. Passes along, sorry, it's in my pocket. That's a pen, that's not it. Just one for 12 years. I'm not giving it. One of our uh, one of the goals that we were given from the district uh, directives was to make sure that we opened uh, not just Discovery Oaks with stable and, uh, enrollment, uh, but try to balance as you saw in the presentation balance that balance the enrollment across the way. So when you take a look at the grandfathering issues that take place, I know those are big issues and those those will come to the surface. 
However, our goal is to open Discovery Oaks or open the new school in fall of 1819 with stable enrollment, as well as give the opportunity to, uh, for the team to staff uh, the staff appropriately as well. So the superintendent said, it well, um, it's going to be a great opportunity to balance uh, enrollment across the board. Uh, Mr. Foss, anything you complain? Say, we got more eyes. Hi, Mr. Is that working? Check, check. <laughs> All right, so I, we, I do have two questions regarding the ESC programs, um, specifically ASD. Would, would gifted continue to be half day, uh, an option for a full time, full day or a full time gifted program at Doe? So right now, I mean, actually, it's a good question. That's one that we'll have to go back. We will, at this point, we will not disrupt uh, the current momentum we have with gifted students and the education that they are provided every single day. Um, uh, we know that uh, it, we can look at whether or not this will be a, uh, a full day option versus a half day option. But from our standpoint, we are not trying to disrupt uh, any of uh, the, uh, the gifted momentum that we currently have. And more importantly, we are looking to grow that momentum and to have greater offerings and more time on task for students who are eligible for, um, eligible for this type of learning process. Um, Professor McCauley, anything on that? This is my Assistant Superintendent of Climate and Culture who uh, leads all of, uh, you have a question? I, I heard, yeah. Okay. Um, basically, <laughs> as with all the programs for students with uh, special needs, um, what we all put in the school will be a function of what the neighborhood requires. Um, we try to minimize the, the amount of distance that students with disabilities have to travel uh, from one school to another, uh, but we balance that with making sure they have experiences um, with, with kids who are normally developing. So what we ultimately put at the school will be in large part a function of what the needs are for our community rates. Thank you, Professor. Okay, we have three questions regarding Eagles Landing and bus transportation. Yeah. So um, will there be busing to the back of Eagles Landing? Um, also, Specifically, transportation is at 1.5 miles or 2 miles. Right now, set at 1.5, there will be bus into in the back of uh, Eagle Landing. We know that's a, that's a major hike, so we will continue to have uh, transportation that uh, pushes that provides the opportunity for kids who are in the back of Eagle Landing to ride a uh, to ride a bus to um, to Discovery Oaks Elementary. I, I would never want a kid from Eagle in and out of there because that family members live there as well. Never want a kid walking down that stretch. It's a long stretch, and that's another speedway for those of y'all who live in there. <laughs> Slow it down. Just School's going up. But, uh, but uh, we will have uh, a busing option. That means that um, if you're a family member that lives uh, in the front half of Eagle Landing and you want to uh, have that opportunity and we have seats available, you will take advantage of that opportunity as well. But nonetheless, it, it will be afforded in the back of Eagle Landing um, as we create this design. Would that be from the address of the school number to Okay. Um, one of the questions is regarding the possibility. Have we ever considered the possibility of a catwalk uh, across? Yeah, I would say that it's interesting. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I believe I can do a lot of things. I don't know if I can pull that off. <laughs> um, I don't even know. I mean, I, when, <laughs> who asked that question? <laughs> you got him. This bro, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a teacher of a school district. <laughs> it's a good question, Ms. Cheryl Brown. It really is. Um, it's an interesting. I don't know a model like that one. That'd be interesting too. We could make it one of them. Um, you know, I never thought about it. Uh, I don't, I, you know, if we can go back and see if there's actual need, uh, the county commission is the one who sets and establishes that, that, that those walkways. Um, that's interesting. I don't, I mean, you talk about a catwalk instead of a stoplight, it goes through it. It goes over yeah. the, the, yeah. the elevator. And, and bikes and right. walkers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's interesting. I don't know if. Um, yes. My <laughs> team's like, stop talking, let me answer this question. <laughs> in, internal, internally, we have discussed that option. That is, uh, a stoplight is, is expensive. That is cost prohibitive right now unless the county commission or some, some other entity were to jump in on that. Right. 
Okay. And the catwalk crew. Meaning that, uh, I guess it's a lot, it's expensive and the cost. It's also, it you realize how much it is to put a stoplight in. It's expensive. It's like over $200,000. Yeah. You're just going, hey, stop and paint and put a light up. That doesn't happen that way. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into it. All right, so I'm going to try to pull, there's several questions regarding safety with the traffic on, yeah. on the highway. Yep. So I'm going to try to pull Fair. some of these together. Uh, has there been any studies or analysis done on the impact of the rezonings with traffic, especially with respect to full traffic at its capacity uh, on the outer beltway? Yes, uh, there we go. Yes, we just finished a traffic study. As a matter of fact, the results are due in any day, but he gave me a vocal... Uh, told me that this does warrant it. As a matter of fact, without the school, it still warrants that the neighborhood coming out of Deer View alone warrants a traffic light. So that study is complete. Uh, they set up and made their models, and yes, that is the case. Uh, that leads to another question, too. You, you talked about uh, traffic lights. How about at Eagle's Landing? Would there, is there any talk of uh, a light there? That's a, that's a county issue. <laughs> that's what I, said. Uh, I sit on the Planning Commission, so I will certainly take that to the Planning Commission and ask them about that, but that doesn't relate to the school board. And that goes to a part where, um, you know, my, my job is to make sure that we ha I have immediate, safe conditions and proximity of the school. And we know that Eagle Landing is, is close to it, but I've got to do something right across the school for the kids who I want to be able to walk out of their neighborhood and go directly to that school. So that stoplight for me is the, most, is the greatest priority is right in front of the school. Um, anything that anyone aspires to to leave, I think I had this conversation outside for another stoplight down the Eagle Landing. Please push your county commission commissioners and uh, let them uh, you know let them know uh, where you stand in reference to your safety and uh, and your concerns, and determine whether or not that's a, a doable option. But but for me, um, priority number one is to have a stoplight from that school for accessibility. Okay, you you might have already addressed this, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it. Does rezoning impact students that are already enrolled in Poe, such as option yeah. one? Yeah, it does. It does. It, we it, we go back to. Um, let's see if I can go back to uh, this. Go back to this. Uh, let's see how to put all these fancy transitions. Take more time. We're just getting there. I'm sorry, I'm getting there. One more. So right here, it does impact uh, students who are um, who are currently going to this program. Uh, we have students that are they're in these neighborhoods currently that are going to Poe and also Eagle Landing. Those will be impacted now going to Discovery Oaks. Uh, I, I hope this answered your question, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, from the maps, there's a lot of potential growth in the community. How are you going to ensure there's not overcrowding like there has been at Poe and that the quality of teachers with the current shortage yeah. across the state? And along with that, there's another question. I'll let you answer the first yeah. one. So, so fair, fair question. I mean, we, we talk about Poe. Right now, um, I have 1,400 kids at Poe. And with this recommendation, I'll have 800. So I have a, uh, a large number of seats for accessibility for growth. So uh, I am openly not concerned about the potential of growth for Poe. Um, I'm openly not concerned initially about the potential growth that Discovery Oaks will have. Um, we have built this building that is uh, very similar to the building of, of, of Coppergate, and we didn't build it with the intent to put uh, portables in the school. What the school allows us to do is to add on additional wings down the road if we see that there's a substantial amount of growth within this community versus <laughs> pumping portables within uh, within within the school. Anything, Doc? Uh, part, of, part of our responsibility is to slowly reduce the number of relocatables at the existing school yeah. as well. I don't think the community is aware, but we have more than we have 982 relocatables in Clay County School District, and uh, uh, 700 of them are 20 years or older. So we're kind of working with the state as we work with our plans to ensure that not only are we responsible with permanent space moving forward, but we're also uh, looking at how to reduce the relocatable population, which is really not as efficient and, and has issues, I'm sure. Thank you, sir. So uh, you're actually, Dr. Kemp, addressing two of the questions uh, re related to with the new school, will there be no more portables at our schools? Can you just address the, the portable situation and, and what we're doing there? What we're doing with the new school is just so, you might, for Discovery Oaks, it's going to basically just give you some metrics on it. 
It's going to sit on 33 acres. It's going to have a capacity of approximately 162 kids. We're going to open up that school with zero uh, relocatables. It's going to have over 114,000 square feet. We'll have 50 classrooms. Um, will we continue to have portables and relocatables? Yes, because we didn't get to 982 overnight. So we're going to have a plan, a slow, a slow plan to start reducing portables um, at all of our schools at the time. And, and some will be removed. Yeah, that's the, to answer the question, some will be removed as a result of the rezoning efforts at, uh, from BOE and Oakley Junior High. And to answer the second question, the second question was pertaining to teacher shortage. And I will tell you, it, it is a national shortage. It really is. And uh, I own a superintendent that I have to do a better job with growing teachers in the high school model in order to prepare them to have that pathway. Um, but we, were, we are going to do, an do a better job expediting the hiring process, have an earlier process. We'll have open contracts uh, through with human resources where we're going to go to a number of uh, universities and colleges that have uh, sound educational pro uh, uh, programs, and we're going to offer them jobs on the spot. It's going to be an open contract, and then they'll be able to come. They'll be able to come to our school district, and then the principal, then the principal will have the availability to to hire. So we have got to do a better job filling our positions. Um, I will openly. I'm trying to work with the Clay Ed uh, Education Foundation in order to figure out if I can incentivize teachers in hard to fill positions as well. So we got a number of things going on in order for us to attract newcomers and uh, in order for us to work collectively with teachers, bring teachers to Clay County. I would say Clay County sells itself. It is an awesome county to be in educationally. Ma'am, you said you had one, I'll answer one question. Uh, I'm going to ask him to alliterate a little bit more about the difference between a portable and a relocatable. Are same thing. Same thing. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to put two questions together. This was the second part of the question I asked you. Um, with three elementary schools feeding into one junior high, will there be another build in the next five to six years to handle the growth at the junior high level? And on top of that, what is the vision of expanding any of our high school's capacities in the future? Yeah, so right now, there, it's not in the forecast to, uh, to build another junior high school. Um, it, it, it's, it's not. Uh, if we continue to have, I mean, I believe as we transition and Discovery Oaks is going to alleviate a lot of those uh, concerns by putting sixth grade back into our surrounding ele uh, elementaries in, in the Oak Leaf area, it's going to allow us to absorb a number of those kids and then have that transition to seventh and eighth grade. So as of now, it's, uh, it's not in the forecast to, to vision in order to build. Um, anything from, from your side, or what was the second part of that question? Uh, high schools, any high school. Yeah. Uh, right now, there, there's not this high school. Do, I mean, they have uh, 2,400 kids, and uh, but they're able to house those students within their school. Okay. The next two questions are related to the pathway, uh, direct pathway to the school from Eagles Landing or Hamilton Glen. Any considerations for a direct path? Yeah. Very uh, interested. Yeah. Right, right now, there is. Um, <laughs> No direct pathway that's in the books, and I think we'll go back and look and see if there's a backside accessibility opportunity. But then again, we got to make sure that we are securing uh, this uh, this this property um, as well. I do have three uh, concerns regarding, and probably won't be able to answer this because it, it relates to maybe county commissioner. But one is about the speed limit uh, school zone, where that would start and where that would end. Uh, one about the widening, the widening of Plantation Oaks Boulevard. Is that going to happen anytime soon? At, or a crossing guard at the roundabout for Forest Hammock at Poe. So, so I'll answer the back half first, the crossing guard. Um, the, the, the crossing guard isn't identified and selected by the school district. It's a partnership with the, uh, the county commission, the sheriff's department. Sheriff, sheriff's department. Um, what, we, what we do not want to do, and we both agree to the Sheriff's Department and the school district, we do not want to put a crossing guard at the roundabout. There's just too much traffic. There's just a lot of stuff going on. When we drive it, we, when I drive it, I have a, a number of concerns of trying to figure out if I'm merging or where I'm going. We do not want to put a crossing guard and try to walk kids uh, across that area. Hence the reason why we provide busing in, in uh, Forest Hammocks in order to have our kids get to school in a, in a safe manner even when it's in very close proximity to the school we don't need to provide busing so it's a priority for us to um, to keep safety uh, within that roundabout and for ours the sheriff's office and, and we don't recommend but it's the sheriff's office decision of putting a crossing guard as it relates to what's the second 
which too far is like uh, the widening of plantation yeah. exports. Um, uh, from my side, and I'll let Mr. Fossa, uh, um, that's not something that we get into from uh, from a uh, county's perspective. I believe that is the county commission's job to look at roads and widening and, and accessibility. Um, but right now, that's not a forecast with our bill. In the first part, uh, the school zone. Where would it start as far as the speed yeah, limits? The school zone usually starts at the actual beginning of the school property. So as you're heading, if you're heading down um, past the um, Rondon, you're heading south past Eagles Lane, and you can see where they're starting to build the access road going in there. That's where the school zone will start. And then it'll end um, just before the end of the lane. So basically when they do a school zone, it's usually right where the school property comes from. That's where the, skin and, of the county sets that. And, and I guess the question was speed limit, it is uh, under 20. It's under 20 for the speed limit. Okay, this question is, will there be an extended day available at the new school? Uh, right now, we talking about for students? No, for pay here, right? Uh, right now, there's there's no discussions. Uh, we will have the normal school hours uh, that, that are identified for the surrounding schools and for this county with, without uh, dis with the, at uh, DOE and Discovery Oaks. I, I think they mean the daycare, like, you know. Oh, hours. it's in a daycare. Add four hours at a time? Like, I'm not going to be the superintendent that does that. Throw <laughs> it out of here. Co currently has YMCA. Yeah. Um, it, we are always in. Con uh, consistent conversations with, with the why they do all of our, our legwork. So we will work to determine if there's an actual need within the community. And uh, do we, OBE, we offer, Ms. Kendrick, do we offer that as well? So we will mirror the same opportunities that, that they offer, those schools will, will offer it as well. Do we, you would, the DOE, you would not suffer from anything that you're currently experiencing at Poe or at OBE. At it would be the same mentality. We only have one more question unless there's any more from the audience as far as cards. Do we have any more cards? Have one more. Okay, so this question is when is the voting to decide who goes where and when is it due to take place? So it's a, it's a January. Uh, my aspirations are to take it to the board in January. Um, that will be the first Thursday in January. I believe the, is it the fourth. There we go. It's uh, January 4th. And uh, at that time, it will be on, on a discussion agenda item. And the board will, um, we do a lot of our pre-work, I'm just telling you openly, when we go to the school board meetings, uh, you'll see a lot of our pre-work is done at, at our agenda reviews. So a lot of questions are asked for the board, and those are uh, taped live as well through our agenda review, which is usually acts uh, within two weeks or ten days uh, before uh, the board agenda, I mean before the board workshop. That's for me to review every agenda item to dive deep into the analytics, my decision making, and why I'm bringing the uh, initiative or project to the board. So a lot of our issues are hashed out uh, in uh, in that process, and then 10 days over the phone working individually with the board members so they can ask any questions or better understand working with staff of the direction in which we go. Uh, so that will be on January 4th, and um, it will be under a discussion item uh, for the board to have discussions about next steps. Uh, if they approve that process, we will move immediately to, um, to start uh, marketing, start branding, start uh, is start to work to start to engage our community members at, over on a monthly basis or bi-monthly basis until we get to school about your course offerings, enrollment in school, who your leader is, what our next steps will be, and we will over communicate to this community about your next steps. So you will never be in the dark of what we're trying to accomplish. So that when we get to day one on in August, your kid is ready, prepared to go, and the school is identified for them. Mr. Superintendent, will you allow Duval County residents to apply to DOE? Uh, the answer to that is no. The answer to that is no. Um, this is a uh, community school. The, those who is the same criterion for every school in the Duval County District Schools. Students who are zoned for that school and live in this area will only attend the school. Now, we do have a controlled open enrollment in our district, which is uh, driven by the state. But uh, these schools, uh, every school in the, in the Oak Leaf area, it relates to elementary and junior high, they will not be afforded the opportunity to participate in the controlled open enrollment. And once we do the reconfiguration uh, rezoning, they won't meet the threshold anyways because the threshold is 85% at capacity. And the reason we're not going to open in the Oak Leaf area, we, with year one with opening the school, we got to have stable numbers for enrollment so we know how to efficiently create uh, a budget and efficiently create a staff allocation model for year one. 
After year two, things, things change. So we'll look at uh, whether or not controlled open enrollment is an opportunity in this area if we have available seating. I can tell you with the growth, Oakley very seldom will ever be a part of the controlled open enrollment. <coughs> The last uh, card that I have is more of a concern, I think, as we related to the speed zones, the school zones and the speed limit. Uh, Eagles Landing kids that walk will not be in the school zone limit, and that is not safe for the ones who are walking or riding bikes. It's not really a question, but more of a consideration. No, we, we appreciate it. I, I mean, that's a, that's a long strip, as I said earlier, that um, the, the, the speeding takes place uh, for a while. No, but no matter what school the, you, know, you go to, whether it's Poe or whether it, that, that's still going to exist, um, I would say push your sheriff's office to, to, to make potential adjustments in that area, um, if, if possible. Okay. Um, before we leave, Dr. Stallman, anything, <laughs> anything you want to talk about uh, leadership's uh, scope of work uh, instructionally for, for DA? Uh, Discovery Oaks, to be honest with you, it's going to be a beautiful state of the art school to be excited about. It. We are really excited about the academic program at Discovery Oaks. And to answer one of your former questions, Ms. Kendrick and I met this morning and talked about building a, a parallel program at OVE. We're really excited about that. She's got many of those initiatives already out of the ground there. So um, you're thinking just like she is. So that's exciting. Um, we hope to be the model for the STEAM STEM culture and approach to instruction, which is project-based learning for the state of Florida. That's our goal in academic services is to bring in some unique ways to re-engage our students in problem solving and thinking about real world problems. So you may see some different curriculum there uh, that we'll be playing with a little bit. I guess playing is a loose word, but we'll be uh, experimenting with and having kids uh, be exposed to a different way of thinking um, that we think will be forward thinking for the future. All right, so um, again, I appreciate you coming out this evening. Uh, as much as we, we put this on our social media, as much as we put this on uh, we, in our parent links, we know that uh, it, it's the holiday time and it may not be the greatest time, but it's a time we wanted to get in front of you before I took it to the board. I wanted to engage with you. I wanted your information, your reflection, your feedback. If you have feedback this evening, there's, there's post-it notes that will be available up front in these chairs that you can write uh, any questions or concerns or feedback would be positive or negative that you want to. In order to put on the, uh, those uh, post-it notes, we'll take it back and I will problem solve with my staff in order to, to look and determine if your recommendations can be made, uh, uh, can, make, can make adjustments to my recommendations before I present to the board. Nonetheless, uh, I thank you for being here. I thank you for your commitment to Clay County District Schools, and I thank you for the opportunity to have a good evening. <laughs>